For more insight on what to expect on Tuesday's voting day and in the coming days, I'm joined in here by Nola Haynes, a political scientist at Georgetown University. Nola, thanks for joining us here in the studio. First of all, what's at stake in this year's election? What's at stake? Uh, that is a really big question, Esther. <laughs> uh, what's at stake? You have to think about it in two buckets. There are personal things at stake for former President Trump, and there are personal things at stake for um, Vice President Harris. And then there are things at stake for the country. So what's at stake for the country are truly two different views of the world. There's one that is a progress forward, um, we're not going back um, model. And then there's another model that wants to go back. Um, I think the former president has mentioned the 1700s quite a few times. Um, not, not very sure what that complete vision will look like, but there are two different visions for the country. And personally, the former president has a lot at stake in terms of some of his legal battles. And then also the vice president has a lot at stake in terms of this kind of really scary time of political grievance and retribution that we're living in. Do you foresee a legal battle between the two presidential candidates? Because it looks like it is very close to determine who might really win this election. Another challenging question. <laughs> so there are all legal battles are already happening. So absolutely, I do foresee legal battles. To, to, it's kind of hard to say right now at this point what that may look like. I think it all determines what tomorrow night, if it's going to be a clear victory or if it's going to be a very tight victory the way that some polls are projecting, which as a political scientist, I'm actually not a big fan of polls. but. Um, there are more polls than not that are predicting a very tight race. And if that's the case, that's what we need to worry about. Right. Now, let's say the outcome is disputed by either political party. Now, how strong are our legal institutions to thoroughly look into the issues and determine the winner? This is a question on a lot of people's minds. You know, there, there's a lot of concern, not only just about the um, Supreme Court, but also about lower, lower courts, too. So. It depends on where those disputes, you know, will take place. And also what judges, what lower court judges have been appointed by whom, right? And then not really knowing uh, how the Supreme Court would adju adjudicate because you can, you can believe that if the Trump camp, if it doesn't go their way on, in lower courts, they are definitely gonna wanna kick it up to the Supreme Court. Now the worry there is you have a Supreme Court where most of the judges align uh, conservative politically and three were appointed by the former president. So will it be free and fair? I hope so, because if not, we no longer have a democracy. Now, what if it's all clear? What are the next steps to swearing in the new president? Well, there are some dates in December to keep in mind, December 11th, December 17th, December 25th. So by the 11th, I just want to make sure um, disputes must be resolved by December 11th. By December 17th, um, the electors must meet to select the president and vice president. And by Christmas Day, it'll be a big Christmas morning for everybody. The votes must be certified. And then we move to January 3rd, where the new Congress is convened, and on the 6th, is where they vote, where the vice president will open the vote for her own election. So it's a very interesting process, but, but those are the steps. So it doesn't just end tomorrow. And one quick note, we actually may not know, if it's not a clear cut election, we may not know until maybe a couple days who the president of the United States will be. And then there is this process in December and then this process in January. And Nora, very quickly, well, from people like us who come from other countries, the election is usually done and it's over with, counting is done. But uh, in the case of the United States, apparently, it's not winner takes it all. What, right. What's that complexity there? Why not? The Electoral College, which is actually not part of the original Constitution, but it was ratified. And so it's, it's around having states, for states to have their say. Back in the day where there was no electronic voting, there were no electronic communication devices, and you had a lot of rural America who also wanted their voices heard. Now, this is a contentious thing in 2024. Um, th there's there's this, this saying floating around, should what happened in Ukraine um, be, be decided by some rural ver voters in Kentucky, right? So because of this contentious system around the elect electoral college, Votes are not adjudicated until this process all the way out to the 6th 
is settled. And then it could go beyond that. And if it goes beyond that, then a decision is left up to Congress. 